Justin George Musinich of New York to be Deputy Secretary. Madam President. Senator from Oregon. The Senate will soon cast the first procedural vote on the nomination of Justin Musinich to serve as the Deputy Secretary of the Treasury. I am going to oppose this nomination, and I'd like to lay out exactly why, beginning with a basic rule that I intend to maintain going forward. If a Treasury nominee says that the Trump tax handouts will pay for themselves, I intend to oppose them. The reason why is by sticking with this debunked claim, you're basically laying out the economic policy version of being a flat earther. You're either peddling an idea you know is untrue, or you can't do math. Either way, you shouldn't have a pivotal powerful job at the Treasury Department. When Mr. Muzinich came before the Finance Committee for his nomination hearing, it was a titanic battle just to try to get him to offer any kind of substantive answer on pretty much anything. One question he finally answered straight up was whether he agreed that the Trump tax handouts would, quote, pay for themselves and reduce our deficits. There he gave a one-word response, which was yes. Now, some call this trickle-down economics. Others call it voodoo economics. I call it plain and simple rainbow and unicorn math. No matter what you call it, it just isn't connected to reality. The Trump tax handout will not pay for itself. And even after independent, nonpartisan economic analysis demonstrated that was the case. Even after months of data were released showing that the Trump tax law has failed to live up to the administration's fantasy land promises, Mr. Muzinich continues to cling to this false claim. I'll give him credit he has what my relatives, what Jewish people call chutzpah. But it sure isn't going to win him my support. In my judgment, it raises also a fundamental question of honesty. Before his nomination hearing, newspaper reports ran glowing quotes about him from several key officials at the Treasury Department. They praised Mr. Muzinich's financial expertise, and they talked about the expansive role that he would play in a whole host of areas at the Treasury Department. Not just tax policy, but debt management. And Republican committee members talked all about the work he had put into the development of the Trump tax law. So I was pretty interested in Mr. Muzinich's substantive views on these big questions because I had read these glowing tributes from his colleagues, and I thought, well, if we're going to have someone promoted to this important position, we really ought to get a sense of what he believes on the really important substantive economic issues. So I began to ask the nominee about these questions, and he pretty much, as I indicated, just 
put any response sort of in the well. You know, I couldn't possibly get into that, and I wanted to know why. Because eventually we got around to him saying he really wasn't going to get into these issues because he said if he was confirmed, he would just be, in his words, a building manager. Now, Madam President, a building manager is somebody who doesn't get praised by his colleagues as being an expert on debt management and tax policy. Building managers have important responsibilities. They're involved in things like acoustics and ventilation. They've got responsibilities. That's what building managers do. They certainly don't have duties like those described by Mr. Mucinich's colleagues. So I had some real difficulty reconciling the way his own colleagues described him in these important publications and what he told me about his responsibilities as the building manager. So I think he really is not reflecting what his job is all about and the fact that he would misrepresent that to me in our discussions prior to his nomination, misrepresented to the ranking Democrat on the Senate Finance Committee in charge of the nomination is, in my view, very troubling. I also have had very serious questions about the way Mr. Mucinich responded to my questions about the Trump administration's new policy, really just a couple months old, that would open the floodgates to more foreign dark money in American elections. Now, we all know from this last election about what dark money means. We had our airwaves, TV sets from sea to shining sea, dominated by television commercials that had a tagline on it, something akin to Americans for high school football, or Americans who believe in our flag, or various other things that none of us would possibly disagree with, but would in no way reflect who actually paid for that commercial that found its way to our TV sets. So there were um, that increased flood of dark money commercials through the uh, past uh, November uh, election. And right before that, the Trump administration adopted a rule that would make it even easier for foreign dark money to make its way into our elections. Now, we will be talking about that rule later this week, Madam President. There's going to be an effort, Senator Tester and I, to uh, overturn that flawed uh, policy. But the fact is, this is something that an individual who was nominated for the important position Mr. Mucinich seeks would have some views about. And particularly because the rule change, the rule change made by the Trump administration to allow more dark money in American elections was announced just hours after the American people learned about the illicit activities that an accused Russian spy, Maria Butina, had used to infiltrate conservative groups and undermine our democracy. So if that was a coincidence, Madam President, that the Trump administration announced this new rule making it easier for foreign dark money to make its way into our elections. If it was just a coincidence, 
that they announced it just uh, a few hours after the American people learned about Maria Butina, I got to tell you, that is a coincidence for the ages. And the uh, Trump administration and other officials, of course, say that Maria Butina was just a innocent college student attending American University. I can just tell you, Madam President, I don't know of many college students who go to South Dakota with an NRA political operative to set up a shell company. That is not common behavior for an American college student. But given the fact that the Trump administration had made it easier to get foreign dark money into our elections, and a common vehicle for doing that would be using a shell company, it certainly, again, raises very troubling signs that a nominee for this key position will take no position whatsoever on something so important to protecting our elections. The fact is, with this new policy, the president is essentially blinding law enforcement and telling foreigners and dark money groups that it is open season, open season for election cash uh, to flow. And I asked Mr. Mucinich about this. I said, what do you think about this problem in terms of preventing foreign influence and in enforcing election law? I couldn't get a straight answer. And finally, he told me that, quote, the intent was to further efficient tax administration. Well, I can tell you something, Madam President. I don't think Maria Butina was interested in anything that had to do with efficient tax administration. I don't think she was interested in anything close to that when she went to South Dakota with an NRA operative to set up a shell company. Now, maybe this was just Mr. Mucinich's way of dodging the question. If not, then he's basically suggesting it's just fine with him for special interests and foreign actors to buy American elections because they may be able to sell the American people on the proposition it makes tax reporting uh, easier. I'm going to close with this, uh, Madam President. I have said before that I don't agree with every Treasury nominee uh, from the Trump administration on every issue. I realize that. And there have been individuals on key economic questions whose nominee, nominations I've supported. I thought uh, Jerome Powell was a very wise choice to head the Federal Reserve, Donald Trump's nominee. So I have supported the president on important economic uh, positions. And I voted for plenty of Republican nominees to the Treasury Department before. But I do expect nominees to be straight with me and with the committee. And after all the bobbing and weaving on issue after issue, this is a nominee who doesn't come close to passing that bar. He hasn't met, in my view, a common sense, basic test of giving some sense of where he stands on the important issues. I see my good friend and seatmate on the Finance Committee, you know, here, and we talk often about these, you know, issues. And I'll just say to my colleagues, the proposition that Mr. Mucinich is going to be the building manager for the Department of Treasury that's just a little bit much to swallow when you look at what his colleagues said he had talked about in the past with respect to tax uh, debt management and tax reform and other important uh, questions. And finally, in claiming 
Mr. Mucinich, that the Trump tax handouts will pay for themselves. He's failed on that issue by $1.5 trillion. I am not going to support a nominee for this position who is going to bring unicorn and rainbow fantasies to tax policy and these key questions that are so important to the American people. I urge my colleagues to oppose this nomination of Mr. Bucinich, and I yield the floor.